Ever since I was little, I have watched wrestling. And ever since I have watched wrestling, Japan has always been a big deal. Now granted, this was before the internet took over the world. We the fans didn't know that much about what was going on in the land of the rising sun. We could hear about it after the fact, but seeing actual Porosu was difficult to say the least. And because of that, when we did learn something, it always seemed special. I remember the New Japan invasion of WCW in the 90s. I seen Kensuke Sasaki win the WCW United States Championship, but I never seen their championships until a few years later when I seen Ultimo Dragon with the J-Crown. And then later I seen Scott Norton with the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Hearing it was the top prize in Japan had me curious. When the internet finally enslaved us all, I was re-exposed to Japan and remembered seeing the IWGP Championship. Naturally, I wanted to learn all I could about it, and I learned it's an amazing thing. Unfortunately, with the recent title unification with the IWGP Intercontinental Championship to become the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, that lineage is about to be reset. I'm Walt the Most Gangsta Nerd on YouTube, and these are the 10 greatest IWGP Heavyweight Champions of all time. Number 10, Shinsuke Nakamura, the King of Strong Style. He's my favorite wrestler to ever come out of Japan. This dude is an absolute legend. Just straight swagger. He is a three-time IWGP heavyweight champion among a litany of other championships. But to start off, he's the youngest IWGP heavyweight champion at 23 years old and historically unified the IWGP heavyweight championship with the NWF heavyweight championship by defeating Yoshihiro Tokuyama. Shinsuke made it a habit of having five-star barn-burning classics in the ring. Example, his second reign, initiated by defeating Kurt Angle. Again unifying world titles, this time the IGF version of the IWGP with the original. His best remembered win was against Togi Makabe in 2009, cementing himself as not only the leader of chaos, but a force in New Japan as a whole. Number 9, Antonio Inoki. He is the OG of New Japan. And he did not like people making fun of professional wrestling. Like, not even a little bit. Bang! In the face. In the face. Trained by the legendary Ricky Dozan, he is the founder of New Japan, a pro wrestler, a pro fighter, businessman, hostage negotiator, and politician. He was cut from a different cloth. Not only was he actually the IWGP champion three times before it became a regularly defended title, winning a yearly tournament three different times, he was also the inaugural champion moving forward from 1987. He would have an impressive run and afterwards would move forward in changing professional wrestling by working to make New Japan the premier wrestling promotion in Japan and arguably the world. Number 8, Yuji Nagata, also known as Mr. IWGP. You know that guy you come across that says, I don't watch wrestling, I watch USC. Well good choice buddy, pro wrestlers have been killing that game since it started and Yuji Nagata is one of those wrestlers. He would defeat Tadao Yasada to win the IWGP title in April of 02 and not let go of it for over a year. And while he was champion, he would set the record for defenses, having outright epic matches against fellow legends like Kazuki Fujita, Masahiro Chono, and Kensuke Sasaki. While doing that, he would also beat professional fighters Boss Rutan and Josh Barnett. The man was legit. He would defeat fellow legend Hiroshi Tanahashi for his final championship run, having two epic title defenses against Togi Makabe and Shiro Koshinaka. He would be defeated by Tanahashi, ending his second reign. However, Nagata was so special and respected, the defeat is actually seen as a passing of the torch. Awesome. Number 7, Shinya Hashimoto. If Strong Style could walk and talk and kick and then try to break your neck, it would probably look like Shinya Hashimoto. The man was built like a tank, tough as nails and brutal. He would end the 400 day long reign of the Great Muta for his first time as the champ. Though his second and third reigns are much more significant, each lasting over a year defeating Tatsumi, Fujinami, and Nobuhiko Takada for each reign. 
Along with absolute smashers to win the title, his title defenses against other all-time greats like Yoshiaki Fujiwara, Hiroyoshi Tenzan, Masahiro Chono, Scott Norton, Steven Regal, and Ric Flair are immortal. Because of his epic defenses, he would become known as the King of Destruction. In Japan, there are many that would argue he is the greatest IWGP Champion of all time, as well as the greatest of his generation. Unfortunately, he would leave New Japan in controversy. However, his legacy and ability, coupled with the sheer significance of his title reigns, guarantees him a place as one of the greatest of all time. Number 6. Ricky Choshu Ricky Choshu in the late 80s and early 90s was the main event scene. And that's really interesting in retrospect as some say he was never really the ace of New Japan but could have been. Become an IWGP Heavyweight Champion three times by defeating legends Salman Hashimikov, Vader, and Tatsumi Fujinami, his feud with the latter being epic, Ricky would defeat Fujinami in their final match, winning his third and final title possession. Also, he would have some incredible title defenses against Japanese immortals like Scott Norton, Kaiji Muto, Shinya Hashimoto, and Masahiro Chono, his third time with the championship being his strongest putting on classic matches that still hold up to today. Even the ending of his final reign was perfect when he lost to the Great Muda, starting the Three Musketeers time in the main event scene. A true legend in the land of the rising sun, but if you need a more direct contribution to professional wrestling, he's the man that invented the sharpshooter. Number 5. Kaiji Muto More famously known as the Great Muda to us wrestling fans in the United States, Kaiji Muto is a wrestling legend. Part of that legend is being a four-time IWGP champion. Fascinatingly enough, he did this as himself and as his alter ego, the Great Muda. Something he did masterfully his entire career, portraying two separate characters but never letting the mystique of either one diminish. His first run alone would last 400 days, defeating fellow legend Ricky Choshu to become the champion. He would defeat Shinya Hashimoto, Scott Norton, and Shinsuke Nakamura for each of his following three IWGP runs. He would also make history when he defeated Masahiro Chono to become IWGP Heavyweight Champion as well as winning the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, a prestigious accomplishment very few wrestlers can boast, as well as being one of the very few wrestlers to win both New Japan's IWGP title and All Japan's Triple Crown at the same time with his defeat of Hiroki Goto. He would also have some epic matches defending the title as well, gaining victories over Sting, Road Warrior Hulk, Scott Norton, The Great Kabuki, and Kensuke Sasaki. And even in the end of his final run of the IWGP Championship was glorious when he was defeated by Hiroshi Tanahashi, the soon-to-be ace. And oh yeah, he did the mist. Who didn't love seeing the mist? Number 4. Kensuke Sasaki I remember this dude plain as day, because when New Japan invaded WCW back in the early 90s, he beat Sting for the United States Championship, and a younger, less gangster, more nerdy Walt was heated about it. This dude was built like a brick house, a mountain of muscle and man. That may be why he was known as the Power Warrior. He would end Shinya Hashimoto's historic 489-day reign as IWGP champ, in order to begin his own, the first of five, along with many more historic moments. Like being the first wrestler in history to win the G1 Climax Tournament while IWGP Heavyweight Champion, and being one of only two wrestlers to have held the IWGP Heavyweight title, as well as the All Japan Triple Crown and Pro Wrestling Noah's Global Honor Crown. His defeats over Hiroyoshi Tenzan, Kazuki Fujita, and Toshiaki Kawada are each classics. Equally awesome are his defenses, seeing him defeat Masahiro Chono, Kaiji Muto, and Don Fry. With such glorious accolades, not only as IWGP champ, but throughout the wrestling world, he is without a doubt one of the greatest. Number 3. Tatsumi Fujinami The Dragon of New Japan Originally the protege of Antonio Inoki himself, Tatsumi Fujinami would go on to become so much more. He is recognized as the second ever IWGP Heavyweight Champion, defeating Big Van Vader to do so. 
he would have to defeat Riki Choshu to become champion again, also having to battle Kensuke Sasaki and Shinya Hashimoto in order to secure championship gold. Just as impressive is the challengers he's defeated in order to keep the championship, Bam Bam Bigelow and Jerry Lawler. However, probably most famously, Tatsumi Fujinami would face Ric Flair at Starcade 91. He would defeat Flair and in doing so become the first wrestler to simultaneously hold the IWGP Heavyweight and NWA World's Heavyweight Championships simultaneously. He would continue on winning his final IWGP Championship in 1998, going on to become one of the most prominent wrestlers in New Japan history. Awesome. Number 2, Hiroshi Tanahashi. The Ace. He is New Japan's main man. An 8-time IWGP Heavyweight Champion with almost 1400 days as the champion, a feat so very few can attain. Tanahashi's rise to glory isn't unfamiliar to the modern wrestling fan. Tanahashi had support and the backing of the fans. Unfortunately, management, or Antonio Inoki, just didn't see it, going with Brock Lesnar instead. Brock would, however, end up doing some pretty bad business. So after this, a tournament was held, and Hiroshi would defeat Giant Bernard to win the vacant title. As time progressed, he would have to defeat AJ Styles, Kazuchika Okada, and Kaiji Muto, and Kenny Omega, among others, to gain his multiple reigns with the championship. He also had some incredible matches defending the title against Shinsuke Nakamura, Hiroyoshi Tenzan, and Tiao K, amongst others. He would move on to win other titles. However, it is his time as IWGP Heavyweight Champion that earned him the moniker, the once in a century talent. Number 1, Kazuchika Okada. To me, the Rainmaker is the greatest IWGP Heavyweight Champion of all time. He has shattered every record previously set, with one distinction. He did it in five reigns. His matches are the stuff of legend having five-star classic after five-star classic. He, along with Kenny Omega, are the only wrestlers to ever have a seven-star match, not to mention the other times he broke Dave Meltzer's rating system. When you wind the clocks back to 2012, Okada became the Rainmaker. He would challenge Hiroshi Tanahashi after he had defended the IWGP Heavyweight Championship against Minoru Suzuki, and at the time, absolutely nobody would take him seriously. Okada would make everyone regret it. He, like others on this list, had had the opportunity to learn abroad. Mixing the fine-tuned technical wrestling in the US and high-flying maneuvers of lucha in Mexico with strong style of New Japan, resulting in an almost unbeatable hybrid threat. threat. Seriously on another level away from us mere mortals. He has defeated so many of the most talented, it's mind-boggling with wins over Jay White, Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, Tetsuya Nato, Kota Ibushi, Tanahashi. I could go on, but I think you get the point. With such a prestigious record, accolades, ability, and all these achievements, who else could possibly be considered the greatest of all time except Okada? And that is the list. Now we both know I'm right, but if you got something you want to add, Tell me down in the comments because I want to read it. I'm Walt, the most gangster nerd on YouTube, and I'll be seeing you soon enough.